Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokak, Kodash. Double honors to our elders and apostles, the GMLs who rule well. Peace and salutations to the elect Akim. On the four corners, pushing the truth for sincerity. Peace be unto you. This video presentation is going to be about be not over wise. Be not uh, be not over righteous. This is uh, according to Ecclesiastes seven and sixteen. It says, "Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldst thou destroy thyself?" So the scripture equates destroying thyself with being over righteous and making yourself over wise now reason you don't be over righteous because we know what what is righteousness righteousness is keeping the law statutes and commandments you're over righteous and now i also want to preface this because there is no letter to the t about when is over righteousness or when is that's not over righteousness you know, the Most High is the ultimate judge. You know, we're just practicing, rehearsing the righteous acts. Because what one person says is over-righteous, another person might say it's not over-righteous, and the Most High might say, okay, that brother's right, that brother's wrong. Let, you go in the scriptures, it's going to say, let the Most High judge between thee, me and thee. But I'm going to give you the knowledge that I've gained from the experience of being in this truth, having taught out in the streets, having encountered brothers, sisters, and interacted with people of different uh, of different levels of faith and different faiths. I'm going to read this again. It says, Be not over-righteous over much. Be not righteous over much. Neither make thyself over wise, why shouldst thou destroy thyself? Now let me start off with the first part. It says, be not righteous over much. Uh, one thing about be not righteous over much. Uh, foods that we eat. The scripture says we shall eat our bread defiled amongst the Gentiles. And every time, you know, you uh, see somebody eating something, you uh, point to, oh, this got that in it, that's got that in it. You know... The scripture says we're going to eat our bread defiled amongst the Gentiles. So we're going to eat literally shit. You know, so. You can't go around policing what brothers eat. Now, let me finish also with this. The next verse. To the next point. Eat stupid. Let's say. Oh, man, all this shit that we eat is, you know, bullshit. But then you eat, you know, let's say a, a pork chop sandwich or or something and, and uh, uh, something that you could easily avoid. Say, oh, man, they got jealous. Oh, man, that's just a little bit of gel. Like, don't be stupid, man. Like, like there's there's a balance. It says be not over righteous, be not over wicked. And you would think you say don't be wicked at all. But the thing is that. We're we're according to to the being in his flesh and being in captivity as well because we're already in the chains of this flesh and then we you know in chains by this Esau uh, society by his uh, government by his rulership so you're going to come times where you can't avoid something you know we know all this chicken and shit is GMOs and shit like that is uh is evil and wicked but at the same time, you don't go and, let's say, eat something like, let's say, uh, uh, Jello, which is made out of, uh, I think, ground up pig bones or something like that. You don't, you know, go and say, hey, man, you know, it says we want to eat our bread defiled. Like, no, like, come on, man, don't be stupid. You know, there's a there's a balance of being over-righteous, being not over-wicked. You know, because we're going to do things that's going to be wicked according to the scripture, which is going to be unlawful for us to do. The uh, garments that we wear. Us not wearing garments that all match the same fabric, that's wicked. 
But when it says be not over wicked, is don't go and proactively look for garments that mismatch. You know, that's being not be not over uh, wicked. You know, we we are in captivity, you know, and we make with what we can. You know, you don't just go out and say, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna look for some uh mismatching fabric. Matter of fact, I'm gonna look for a, a sweater that got like fifteen different fabrics in it. You know, some is gonna be uh uh, nylon and polyester and it's going to be part cotton and another part is going to be leather and another part is going to be silk another part is going to be velvet you know you don't like don't be over wicked we have liberty through Yahweh why Yahweh Shai don't be foolish and and uh uh frustrate that liberty that we have and frustrate that grace that we have you know uh, woman, you woman might be on a period again. That's wicked to be around woman that's on a period. We can't do nothing. Being not over uh, wicked, you know, but it says be not over righteous. You ain't gonna just say, man, man, bitch, you gotta sleep out in the fucking garage. I don't give a fuck where you. The scripture says you can't sleep in here with me. You're unclean. You don't, man, stop. Don't do some stupid ass shit like that. That's being over righteous. And the scripture says, be not over wicked because having a woman in your house is over is, is wicked, but be not over. When you're over wicked is when you, uh, let's say, oh man, she's, well, she on a period, you know, I'm, I might want it. I can, I can fuck her on a period too. Some shit like that. Like, don't be stupid. You know, that's, you, you can, you cannot do that. That's, that's, that's something whether you're in captivity or not, that's not hard to do. But it's hard to uh, have separate living quarters for your woman while you're in captivity to keep the law righteously as we're supposed to do that. Now, back to where it says be not over-righteous. There's, there's plenty of ways to be over-righteous. Sometimes I'm, I fall in that, that, that aspect. But you want to, to, to give you an idea I think it's a good measure. This is for me how I decide if I'm being over righteous. How would I feel if the apostles knew? If if I found out I was doing this? That's that's one question to always ask you. Like, what would the apostles say if they knew you was doing that? Or how would you explain that to the apostles that you're doing that? You know, how would you you know your how would Shai feel? Like how like could could your how I really Defends you before the father and say, okay, this this brother did this. Let, let's say, here, here's another example of being uh, over-righteous. Another example of being over-righteous is wearing fringes everywhere. And now, other brothers could be like, man, no, that's not over-righteous. You're supposed to wear your fringes. Brother, it's, it's over-righteous because... With, First, we're bringing unwanted attention. There's a time and place for everything. You you don't want to bring that type of attention to you in a time like this. In a time where we're going to be prosecuted or persecuted for this word, you, you don't want to be known as that guy that's the prophet. Because the spirit of the law, remember the spirit of the law, the spirit of the law specifically of the law of the fringes is to remind people to keep the law statutes and commandments. So you're supposed to be able to look upon another brother and see, okay, I got to keep the law statutes and commandments. The average person that sees, looks at uh, your fringes and your border of blue, they're not going to say, oh man, man, yeah, I should keep the law statutes. That's not what, that's not the impression that you're giving. Because now remember, the intentions of the fringes and the border blue is to remind people. So if you're wearing a border of blue with fringes on it, you're not reminding people. Let's say you see somebody like me. Now, I personally do my best to keep the law set your commandments. Most people aren't out here is Israel that aren't claiming Israel. You know, they're most most people are in the world. That's why most people are going to be destroyed. In their sins, so when they see that the the impression that they're gonna get is that why is this dude wearing this? They might not even notice, 
Or they're going to be like, oh, that's one of those Israelite guys. Now, a person like, let's say myself, I'm not going to be reminded to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. I'm going to be reminded like, yo, you're taking this little thing a little too far. Because the whole purpose and intentions of the fringes and the border of blue is what's to remind people. Now, you have a better... You have a better... Uh, you you do better just having a shirt that says keep laws and the statutes and commandments. That's like saying, uh, let's say, for instance, um, let's say I'm doing sign language, and if everybody understands sign language, that's good. But if everybody lost and didn't understand sign language, if I'm going around doing sign language, then it's, it's all in vain for nothing. So and it actually it suit me better to not do it it suits you better not to wear your, your fringes everywhere that you go you know especially if you putting them on t-shirts and uh uh button-ups uh polos you know all this american apparel that that, that just looks it, it looks to me it looks stupid to be honest because why not just wear the actual real Garment with your border of blue. I'd have more respect for that. But you're trying to assimilate. That's what that says to me. You're trying to assimilate into society by keeping the law of the fringes to the bare minimum. Just to say that, yeah, I did it. Not for the intention of reminding brothers, but just to say, I'm in, I want to follow the letter of the law. And you're supposed to follow the spirit of the law. And, uh, on that, I want to say all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakaq, Wadash. The honors of the elders, apostles, elders who, uh, the GMS who were well, peace and salutations, and shalom.